Awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry? I said you've been traveling a lot, it sounds like. Yes, a, that is both a blessing and an inconvenience. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you virtually. I know, I know. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I get a chance to actually introduce you nicely here. Who knew when we met on the Queen Mary that you'd be doing this? Exactly. It's a magical boat. It was, it was. It was a magical collaboration beginning. Beijing, a long time, but long time no speak. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I wanted to I wanted to know at some point when you and Sarah are working together on your body choice, let us know the company that did it, because they did an awesome yeah. job. We did it ourselves in house. Did you? Well, you've got this a very cool we, Thank you. We have a video editing department. Wow. Now where did you where are you based out of? Buffalo. Yay. What are you most excited about in your business right now? We're ready to get started here. What's the hot group over there in the world of online marketing? The five that we're going to talk about today. Well, honestly, what we're talking about today is probably the sexiest thing we're doing right now. Ah, well, that's very sweet. I do what I can. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Well, um, so Jerry, here's what um, I'd love us to do. We'll um, go ahead and get uh, his introduction on the recording, because I know we have a lot of people we need to get yeah. this out to. And then um, we'll open up with that first question before he dives in, and then uh, it's all up to you, my friend. You bet. Okay. Right, so there will be big questions, so hopefully we'll be able to save a little bit of time for some questions. Yeah, and um, Seth, did you want uh, did you want to have a, a benchmark for um, questions at the end, or is this pretty much just hours to change? Well, I could do days, but you told me I had an hour, so why don't you stop me at like four, at like two forty-five Eastern time, and we'll do Q and A, and I'll get to as much as I can in those forty-five minutes. Okay. I know everybody who's on the line. Um, we really, we want one of the reasons we have Seth here is we really want you guys to have him in your arsenal as well. And so we've asked Seth to put a next step at the end of the training because we want you to know that this is he really is the foremost expert in creating traffic, and we want you to be able to dive into his world and be a part of all that. So um, Seth, we're excited that you put together a next step for everybody. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> okay, cool. So, Jerry, why don't we go ahead and um, begin the, the process here? Yeah, so anybody else want to say hi before we get started? Okay, Kathy okay. Chapman here saying hi. Hi, who is that? Kathy Chapman. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Good morning. Your call got me here, by the way. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Good deal. Well, I know we're going to have some more people kind of coming in here. Um, I've got our one minute to, to so um, I've, got, I've already gotten and started the recording. So what I'm going to do is, is when we get started, just so we have a clean recording, I'll mute everyone, but it'll take me just a moment to unmute you, so we'll have a little bit of a pause. Um, and so I said I'll go ahead and do that now, so I'll, um, I'll unmute you just to make sure that... Uh, We've got a clean recording view here. Unmuted. Okay. Hey, Seth, are you here? I am here. Okay, cool. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and, and get started because I know we're right at the top of the hour. So welcome, everyone. We're so excited to, to have you all here today, and we're honored to have Seth Green join us today. This is our monthly community call for our uh, client, made conversion, client Conversion Made Simple course and uh, all of our value quiz clients that we love to death. Um, we're very fortunate because Jane had the opportunity to meet Seth at a mastermind event recently and was, of course, blown away by his brilliance, which I know you will be. And we, in fact, uh, made the decision to work with, with Seth in our business and optimize our marketing funnel. So we're, we're going to get to experience him firsthand. Um, I want to tell you just a little bit about Seth. He is nationally recognized in direct response marketing. He's authored five best-selling books on his most recent called Cutting Edge Marketing Magic. And he's the only person in history that Dan Kennedy has nominated for marketing, Marketer of the Year two years in a row. That's a pretty astounding achievement. Um, he's been featured on all the national media like CBS Money Watch and CBS News and, and all the national paper, papers like the LA Times. And it's had the honor to speak on stage with people like Jim Kennedy and Jeff Nasty, Misha Tuff, and Yay Van Hughes, uh, just to name a few. He works with clients from the small brick and mortar business to Fortune 500 companies. Some of his clients include legends like Jack Canfield and uh, Ron Grant. So he's working with some of the biggest ones out there and really making a difference in their business. And today, he's going to talk about translating that for us. Um, he's the founder of one of the fastest growing direct response marketing firms in the country, called Market Domination. And his, his sort of approach is very different, and that's why we're excited to hear from him today. He's all about ethically putting your marketing message in front of your competitors' questions, questions competitors' customers. So, Seth, welcome. We're glad to have you here this morning. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Okay, I, w I would love to share that. So here is what attracted me to Value Quiz. See, this is my quiz that I made myself before I knew any better. Um, this is available at quizmymarketing.com, and it is my marketing quiz. And I have people 
go through this quiz before they talk to us. So then when they answer all these questions, we then have a much more higher level conversation about how we can help their business than if I didn't know this information. And the really cool thing that I built in the software program is notice how there's multiple choice questions. Well, every single question has customized, I'm letting the cat out of the bag, it's not a secret, now, you won't, now you'll know, um, but every single cust answer has customized follow-up built into it. So for, let's say if there's 18 questions, for 18 days in a row, you're gonna get an email once a day based on the answer, the exact answer you gave to each question, giving you advice. And we have an incredibly high success rate of people who have been taking this quiz um, about 67% of the traffic that we drive to this page actually fills it out, and our ROI is crazy on it. And when I saw, and I did all this with manual labor, I did all this myself. And when I saw a value quiz, I said, "Oh my God, the light bulb just went off! I can't believe how much better their version is and what I could do with their software than what I built this in. I got to sign myself up for that and replace this antiquated quiz from all of you know a year ago." with something from the 22nd century. Wow, that's very cool. And I, I hope all of you on the, on the phone can see the power of what he's talking about of using the, uh, the answers to the questions and customizing that, not only in the first autoresponder, which of course we, we do customization, but in your ongoing communications. And I know that that's a lot what you'll talk about today is the, the power of, of the continuing communication with the customer. So we're very excited to get you started on your value quiz so we can maybe jumping into that process, and I can't imagine um, how the results are going to increase when you when you get the value quiz in place and get the front end of the process you already have have, uh, have going. So well, we track every single click and every single dollar, so we will be able to tell you and quantify exactly how much more money it makes us. Oh, that's perfect. We love that. We love testing. Very cool. So I know you've got some amazing things to share with us today, so I'm going to let you jump right in and... Um, then at the end, just so everybody knows, if you joined us um, since we started, we will open it up for questions at the end. So go ahead, Seth, and take it away. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and thanks, everybody, for being here. I hope I can deliver a crazy amount of value in a short period of time. I talk really fast. I'll apologize for that up front. One, that's because I'm an East Coast uh, uh, New Yorker, and two, it's because I got a ton of material to cover. So we're recording this so you can watch it more than once and slow me down. So... I want to talk to you. Today we're talking about driving traffic to your value quiz, and we're specifically talking about driving traffic from Facebook. And the reason we're talking about Facebook and not anything else is because in the last year, Facebook has completely changed. Now, I want you to, if you take away one thing, if you write one thing down from this entire session, the one thing I would want you to know is Facebook is not a social network. Facebook is not a social network. It is an ad agency. The only way Facebook makes any money is if business owners like you pay Facebook for advertising to get in front of your, cust your ideal customers and those customers click on those ads. If nobody clicks, Facebook doesn't make any money. That's the only way. So they are not a social network. They are an ad agency. They are a different form of media. Because the consumer does not view Facebook as an ad agency, as you may not have viewed them that way two minutes ago. They view Facebook as a social network. So the way you generate leads, the way you generate sales through Facebook has to be different than the way you would generate it anywhere else. So I want to talk a little bit about the Facebook sales cycle. So there are f several steps to getting people to actually put money in your bank account through Facebook. The very first one is, and we're going we're gonna to break this all down in a few minutes, but you have to have a Facebook fan page for your business, and that is free to set up. Facebook, if you don't have one, you don't have to pay anything for it. It is a free service because Facebook obviously wants you to advertise that fan page so they can make some money. So the very first thing you need is a fan page that has fans to it. So you have to get people to like you. Now, a like on Facebook is the equivalent of, let's say, an opt-in in the real world. So what that means is when someone clicks that they like your page, they are giving you, they're saying, hey, I'm interested in what you have to offer, and I'm willing to hear more from you. Yes, I'm giving you permission. You can show up inside my Facebook newsfeed with status updates or whatever you want to post there so that I can learn more about you. So your first goal is to get fans. The second, because you can't, you don't have anybody to advertise to if you have no fans. It doesn't matter if you are the 
biggest, best relationship guru on the planet. If you have nobody to be a guru for, the tree falls in the forest, no one's there to hear it. Doesn't matter if it makes a sound or not. But we're all business owners. We're all marketers of our business. We need to make a whole lot of sound and a whole lot of noise so that people give us money so that we can add value to their lives. So we've got to get them to become a fan first, and then we want to get them to become a lead, an actual lead where they give us more than a Facebook like. We want an email address. We might want a cell phone number. We might want a snail mail address. I'm going to show you examples of ways to get all of that inside of Facebook. And then, of course, we've got to get them to, we've got to follow up with them and we're going to talk you uh, we talked we sh I showed you my quiz my marketing quiz and how we follow up to turn them from a lead to a prospect and then ultimately to a customer and we're going to talk about how you can once somebody likes your page or clicks on your ad you may have noticed for example let's say you were shopping for something on Amazon you were looking for a hot little black dress and you found one particular dress you like but for whatever reason you hadn't bought it yet you went away will you then notice you get an email from Amazon about that red dress. You see a Facebook ad for that little black dress. You start seeing that little black dress everywhere. Well, that's not a coincidence. We're stalking you. And the nice way of calling tar the nice way of referring to that is called retargeting. We're target we're retargeting you. We targeted you once with an ad for that black dress and you clicked on it. So now we're going to retarget you until you buy it or until you get sick of us. So we're going to talk about how to do all of that starting from Facebook. So again, the bare essentials for this, you have to have a business Facebook page. You have to have a Facebook advertising account. Facebook advertising is free to set up. They're, you know, If you wanted to set up a Google AdWords account, Google makes you pay $5. Facebook lets you set it up for free because Mark Zuckerberg is pretty smart. Because why would you set up an advertising account if you're not going to spend money? And you have to make sure, obviously, that people can find your Facebook fan page for your business. So you'll notice um, if you go to my page, I am Ultimate Marketing Magician on Facebook, you'll notice in the About section, here's a, the most common mistake people make um, when building their fan pages. And you can go back and change this if you made this mistake. It's not your fault. You didn't know. You didn't know me yet. But if you look at the contact information, the website address should not be your actual website. It should be your Facebook URL. So you'll notice the image is cut off, but mine is Facebook.com slash Ultimate Marketing Magician. The reason for that is when people search for you inside of Facebook, if your Facebook URL isn't listed for your website, it makes it harder to find your Facebook page. I don't know why Facebook does that. I just know it's true. And I know if you change that, it will significantly impact how many more people can find you on Facebook and it won't cost you anything. Um, if you go to Facebook advertising, this is how you set up a Facebook ad account. It says advertise on Facebook. Over a billion people will help you reach the right ones. Again, it's free to set up. The interesting thing that Facebook does is they make you set up an ad before you set up an account. So purposefully, I would tell you create an ad that's lousy that you're never going to run so that they will let you set up an account and then immediately pause that ad so you don't have to pay for it. And then you can go dive in to do all the cool stuff I'm about to show you. So there are five different types. Well, there's actually more now. Facebook keeps changing every couple of months. But there are five main types of Facebook ads. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you what those ads look like. Which ones work? Which ones don't work? Again, we're tracking billions of data points every day, so we get the advantage of the 50,000 foot bird's eye view, where we can see everything that everybody else is doing, partly because of who we are and partly because privacy is dead. So this, you'll see my arrow here, sidebar page post ads. Those are on the right side of Facebook and they are advertising a post you made on your page. So you'll see Dominate, my friend Keith Krantz over at Dominate Web Media right here, he wrote a post about he wrote a video. He uploaded a video to Facebook and wrote a post about, hey, my new video post is live. And then he created an ad to show up on the right-hand side advertising his post. Below that is a marketplace ad. What that means is it's a sidebar ad. It's on the right-hand side, but it's not a post anymore. It looks like an ad. It's got a picture of my friend Brad over at Sixth Division and information about what he's offering. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you don't do either of these ads because they're on the right hand side and there's a big reason why we don't ad advise you to do them 
Number one, they won't show up on a smartphone. There is no right-hand side on your smartphone. So nobody, the hundreds of millions of people accessing Facebook on your, their smartphones can't see your ads. That's reason number one. Reason number two is they're small. You can advertise someplace else with a whole and take up a whole lot more real estate and make a whole lot more money. That's called putting it in their news feed. So if you look, this is the news feed right here. What do you think of Bill O'Reilly's tip of the day at my Billy Ray Cyrus? That's a news feed post. That's like when you look on your news feed and see that your friend posted a picture of their cute kids. This is something we did for Jack, this guy. You might you might know Jack Canfield, best-selling author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, biggest book of all time. Well, Jack earlier this year did a launch with Bill and Steve Harrison called bestsellerblueprint.com, which was an informational product that taught you how to write your own bestseller. So, look how much more room this takes up in the news feed. It's a bigger picture, it's more text, it does a whole lot more real estate. Why would you want a little ad when you could have a big ad for the same price? Why wouldn't you want to take up more room and get a better chance at someone taking a chance on clicking on your ad and going to your website or your Facebook page? So, what are the 10 steps to a successful Facebook campaign? Well, first, you've got to have a front-end offer. What I mean by that is an irresistible free offer. And I'm going to show you examples of what offers work on Facebook and why Value Quiz is an incredibly valuable investment for this type of marketing. You need a landing page for them to go to to get their offer, and you need a thank you page where they actually consume your offer. So if you were offering an ebook, there would be a page where they opted in for it, and then a thank you page where they downloaded it. And I'm going to tell you what a tracking pixel is and why it's revolutionary because you can now get Facebook where you will only have to pay for people who sign up on your list. How about that? Number four, we, it was already mentioned, you need an email autoresponder so that you can automatically follow up with people. And then you need to post a status on your Facebook fan page, obviously, that, so you can promote it and advertise. We're going to talk about how to use the Facebook ad manager to create that ad, how to target your perfect audience, how to set your bid price and your daily budget and what you should be paying, how to monitor your analytics, and then how to increase your conversions and how to scale once you have a successful campaign. So front-end offer. What should step one be? What should your front-end offer be? So your front-end offer should be educational-based marketing. Your goal is to get them to raise their hand because they believe you have something that could solve their problem or it might help them achieve a passion, it might fix their golf swing, it might make them a better husband or wife, it might teach them how to cure a disease, it might teach them how to pass, get a higher score on the SATs. Whatever that is, your number one goal is to get them to sign up for it. So you need an amazing, irresistible, free offer. Here are some of the ones that work the best on Facebook, because again, it's a different form of media. And again, this is biased by my results for our clients and what we see working. So a checklist or a cheat sheet. This is one we did, a Facebook marketing checklist that we did from last year. You'll notice, let's say this is the landing page. It's very clean. It's got a picture of the report, two sentences about what it is, and it asks for their email address. You could offer a free guide, a free white paper, a free report. You could offer a coupon or a discount. This is one we did for a dentist that was giving $500 off, six month smiles. Uh, this is our friend Brendan Burchard. Um, from Experts Academy, best-selling author, and he was offering a free video series. You could drive them to a webinar or a teleseminar. You could drive them to an automated webinar where it looks like it's live, but it's really recorded. Uh, this is one of ours. Um, we do one of the, you mentioned how much you liked our, our video trailer. One of the things we do, services we do for some of our clients is doodle animation videos. And this is offering a consult, a strategy session on how they could learn how to grow their business with a doodle video. Uh, this is one we did for a gym, a health club. This was a biggest loser type weight loss contest. And one of the ones that works best on Facebook right now is an assessment or a quiz.
So you saw my marketing quiz. This is Heather Heather's eating quiz, which I think is absolutely, it's not on value quiz, shame on her, but it's absolutely brilliant. You answer these questions about the types of food you eat, the lifestyle you lead, where you work, what you do, what your schedule's like, and then it gives you a personalized menu of here are foods that you should be eating that would keep you healthy, that go with your lifestyle, and geez, why don't you sign up for our eating membership website where we'll give you recipes every month and a diet plan based on your eating personality, which I never would have thought of. Absolutely brilliant. See, helping your body keep up with your business. Uh, you can also a free a free demonstration. A lot of software programs do that, where they say, "Hey, you can get a free trial." So those are some examples of irresistible free offers that work really well on Facebook. Um, you obviously showed you the landing pages of where those offers were held. Some of the elements that are really important for that landing page, you've got to have an attention-grabbing headline. You, they have to know what the call to action is. So for example, the call to action is over here is enter the contest. Here it's schedule my consultation. Here it's I want to watch the webinar. You have to tell them what you want them to do. You can't assume that they automatically know. Um, it needs to solve one problem so or help one thing. So you can't say, um, for example, I did a consultation for a financial advisor the other day, and I said, who's your target market? She said, anybody with money. I said, okay, that's not a good target market, but what do you do? And she said, well, I can help you plan your kid's education. I can help you protect your house, and your property and casualty insurance, your home and auto. I can do your life insurance. I can do your disability insurance. I can help you save for retirement. I can help you take plan for future medical expenses. She had a list of like 12 things and they were all on her business card. I said, you cannot be a specialist in all of those things. People want something where you are the person for solving that particular problem or alleviating that particular pain. You know, there's a reason why the general practitioner physician in Buffalo, where I'm from, might make $50,000 a year if he's lucky, but I have a friend um, who's a neurosurgeon who makes a million dollars a year because of the higher level of specialty. Nobody goes to the neurosurgeon because they've got a cold. So you want to be the equivalent of the neurosurgeon. That offer has to be benefit-driven. Um, there has to be an image of it. They have to know what they're getting. And you want to keep it above the fold. And what I mean by that is it has to be above the top of the... They shouldn't have to scroll down the page to see what they're going to get. Because a lot of times, if you look at a heat map of the way people look at a website, they won't scroll all the way to the bottom. They won't scroll past the first page. So you've got to get them right, get their attention and get their action right away. Um, and you've got to obviously have call to action text in the button. So don't have a button on your website that says submit. Notice her says take the quiz. Um, submit is not very strong, sexy marketing language. Now, I'm going to show you something really, really cool. This is how you can track your conversions on Facebook and only pay for people who do what you want. So you don't have to pay for people who go to the website if you set this up right. You only have to pay for people who sign up. So what you do is you scroll, once you're in your ads manager, you're going to scroll down to something called conversion tracking. And if you click on conversion tracking over here, you'll see a little button come up called create conversion pixel. You get to pick, first you should name it, and then you get to pick what type of conversion it is. Is it a checkout? Meaning is it a sale? Is it a registration like for an event? Is it a lead like an opt-in? And you pick what kind it is and hit create pixel and Facebook will give you this code. Excuse me. You take this code and you give it to your webmaster and you tell them to put it on your thank you page. Because this way you only pay for people who get to your thank you page. Well, how would you get to the thank you page? By signing up for the irresistible free offer. So now you're only paying for people who actually did what you wanted, which is incredible. Then, of course, we've got to get those people. So we've got to upload a status update. We need an image in text or we need a video or a where can you get your image um, well this is an example of a status update I did what do you think of the cover for my next book and I had people vote on 
um, give me feedback on what they thought of the cover. And we made some changes based on what the marketplace told us. Um, this is a status update I did on my quiz. So I said, think your marketing has what it takes. Take this marketing quiz and find out. And there's my URL, quizmymarketing.com. And I have a picture of the quiz. Now, the picture of the quiz is not very sexy. Um, I should have honestly tested better pictures to get people interested. However, it worked so well, I never bothered to. So shame on me for being complacent in my quiz. Your image is the most important part of your ad because the image takes up the biggest space, as you saw in that image we did for Jack Canfield. So where do you get an image from? What if you don't have a graphic designer on staff? Well, one of my secrets is you can either use Keynote or PowerPoint to create an image really fast. So for example, in this case, it was a lousy one, but I just took a screenshot of the website of my quiz. And then I put that screenshot into PowerPoint and saved it as a JPEG. Poof, I had an image. Um, the standard image size is 404 by 404 pixels. Um, you can use PicMonkey to add text to your pictures if you're not using PowerPoint. Um, you can use Pixlr.com to edit or resize your pictures really easy. Um, one thing really important to know is you cannot have more than 20% text in your image per Facebook's rules. So I used you used to be able to take a picture of a Word doc and use the Word doc as your picture and get around the rules of how much text you had in your ad. But now Facebook has changed it and it has to be, the image has to be an image, it can't be just words. So let me show you some examples of images that work well on Facebook and you can get some ideas. So this was one, discover the five easy to avoid foods for weight loss. So you'll see there is text in that image, but it's just the top, the other 80% of the image is the fruits and vegetables in the shape of a heart. Um, this is a brain scan for language for a language learning app. And this is a picture of a woman who got funding for her business and she's happy, presumably. Um, and basically the only reason to put her in the picture is so there's enough non-text in the picture to get the actual text they want. So you have to think about what types of images do you click on? What types of images get your attention? Because a lot of the times your prospect perhaps will behave the same way. In Ads Manager, you have to create an ad. Um, in this case, one of the ads, there's eight or nine actual different types of ads. In this case, we're going to promote a page post. You just click Promote Page Post and pick the post you want to promote. If you haven't written the post yet, you can create a new one right on the spot for that ad. Um, now, here's the really cool part, is how you target your competitor's customers or who you want to get in front of. Now, Facebook will let you pick a location where you want to advertise. That could be an entire country, as you see here. It could go. It could be geo-targeted. You could pick a city. You could pick a state. You could pick a zip code. You can even geo-target down to the congressional district that you live in if you wanted to. Obviously, you can pick men, women, or both. You can pick relationship status. But you can, the really cool part is you can say, what are the interests of the people that I want to run this ad in front of? So if I'm selling a get rich in real estate product, I want to advertise in front of people who bought other get rich in real estate products. And I'm going to teach you level one on this call, which is how to get in front of the fans of those people. And then we're not going to have time today, but if you take me up on my offer for a free strategy session, we can show you how to get in front of their actual customers. So, one of the things that's really important to remember is you have to name your campaign. And if you start running lots and lots of campaigns, you need to keep them all straight in your head. So you need to say, this is, in this case, I'm advertising my Facebook checklist. It's the post number 8.25. I'm advertising in front of Rich Dad fans. I've decided I want to spend $50 a day and I want to track conversions. And I picked my pixel saying I want to only pay for people who opt in and download my free my checklist. And then I want to tell Facebook how much I want to pay every time somebody goes there. And this is per click bidding, but I can also specify that I want to pay per conversion, meaning, hey, Facebook, I'm willing to give you a dollar for every email address I get. And then Facebook will go out and try and get me those people for a dollar a person. How to target your perfect audience. 
Facebook is phenomenal for market research because Facebook has tons and tons of data. So for example, let's say I wanted to advertise in front of people who like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book by Robert Kiyosaki. And that ad campaign was working for me. I could go into the Facebook graph search. That's that bar, search bar up at the top of Facebook. And if I type in there pages liked by people who like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it will show me. Facebook will go to all of its data on all of the fans of Rich Dad, Poor Dad and see where else they go on Facebook. It will see who else they like that they all have in common. And in this case, people who like Rich Dad, Poor Dad also like Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the book. They also like Think and Grow Rich, the book. And they like the late Jim Rohn, the motivational speaker. So now, do you think I should run another separate ad in front of people who like Think and Grow Rich? Absolutely. Do you think I should run an ad in front of people who like both Think and Grow Rich and Robert Kiyosaki together? Would that be a better target market because they like both pages? You bet it would. You can type all sorts of crazy things into the graph bar. You can type employees of a company into the graph search. You can say employees of Success Mag. I could type employees of Value Quiz, and Facebook would show me every person who had identified themselves as their employment was at Value Quiz on their Facebook account. So you could say employees of the Wall Street Journal and go after reporters and try and get yourself written about in the Wall Street Journal. That's one of our secret press getting strategies and how I've been interviewed so many places. You could use, you could say pages like by people who check in at a certain place if you're in a physical location. So there are, there is tons and tons of free research that Facebook will do for you ultimately because they want to help you advertise to more people and make more money for Facebook. So again, if you want to learn more, um, you can go to ultimatemarketingmagician.com slash value dash quiz and sign up for a free 20-minute strategy session. But I'm going to keep diving deeper into how you can get some amazingly cool results from Facebook. If for some reason, I don't know why, but whatever the Facebook's methodology was, um, this advanced data is only available inside of something called Power Editor, Facebook Power Editor. It is a free applica web application that you can use to access an immense amount of targeting data. However, Power Editor only works in Google Chrome as the web browser. So if you have Google Chrome, you're good. If you don't, go get it. It's free. When you go into your regular ads manager in Google Chrome, you can click on Power Editor on the left side to install it and open it. And then all of a sudden, you get access to a ton of stuff. So let me show you what you can see. So Facebook has a deal. And if you friend me on Facebook at facebook.com slash ultimate marketing magician, we will put all this data in your account for you. Facebook has a deal with three of the largest processors of financial data in the country. What that means is they can't, privacy is completely dead. And we can see all sorts of crazy information about you. And you can advertise to people based on this. Those three providers are called Axiom, Datalogic, and Epsilon. And you've probably never heard of them before because you had nothing to do with them. But now you do. So if I click on Axiom, a demographic drop-down menu appears. I click on that. The first one that shows up is Home. I can see what type of house someone lives on. Is it a single family home? Is it an apartment building? I can see how much their home is worth. What's the market value? I can see do they own it or rent it. I can see how long they've lived there. Um, if I click on job role, I can see what they do for a living. So here's farmers, here's financial professionals, here's homemakers. You'll see this is an ad I started to, uh, we were building for people who like Tony Robbins who are medical professionals because Tony was going to do a separate seminar for doctors um, about increasing their ability of getting patients to actually listen to them and follow the directions, take the drugs and follow their care plans. Um, you can also, I'm going to, I can't show you all of the data on this seminar, on this call, because literally there's hundreds of categories, but I just want to give you an idea of how far down the rabbit hole you can go. Um, Facebook can predict the future. So you'll see I'm looking at likely to buy a new Acura, likely to buy a new BMW, likely to buy a new Cadillac. Now, how would Facebook know that? Well, I'm also going to show you Facebook knows what type of car I'm driving now, when I bought it, what make, model, and year it is, and how much I paid for it. But Facebook also knows how much money I make. Facebook also knows everywhere I go on Facebook. So let's say I drive a Toyota Camry now, but I bought it four years ago. So my car loan or lease or whatever is almost up. When I bought it 
let's say I made $50,000 a year and now I make 100 and I've been to the BMW Facebook fan page like four times in the last week, I'm probably likely to buy a new BMW. So you see how having no privacy whatsoever can lead us as marketers to create really, really cool results. Um, you'll see, I can see people who are buying parts for their car in the aftermarket, like guys who are souping up their cars or off-roading. I can see people are fixing their cars. I can see when they bought their car. Um, I can see people who are buying frozen vegetables in the grocery store. They're buying ice cream. They're buying party supplies. They're buying frozen meat. Um, I can see how much income they make. I can see, again, how much their home is worth. So I can see how much they paid for their car. I can see if they drive a motorcycle, if they drive an ATV. I can see when they bought it. I can see if they own a pet. So here's there's 13.8 million people on Facebook who are buying cat food and 16 million who are buying dog food. Well, if I have a product that might be in relation to that, I, only, I don't want to be in front of all pet owners. I only If I'm selling dog food, I want to be in front of dogs. Dog owners, sorry. Not the dogs themselves. The dogs aren't on Facebook. I can see if they're buying soup, and then I can hit the drop-down menu and see what kind of soup they buy. I can see if they're buying salty snacks or chocolate candy bars. I can see if they're buying health food. I can see what type of lifestyle they have. There is an insane amount of data. Look at this. I can see um, occupation. I can see what kind of products they're buying for their kids. I can see if they are a mother. I can see what type of Facebook will break down what type of mom they are. So Facebook has 6.3 million stay-at-home moms for me. Facebook has 28.6 million soccer moms. If I'm selling environmentally product, products, Facebook can help me reach 8 million green moms. Um, let's say my product or service relates to a certain political demographic. Facebook will let me see reach people who donate to conservative political causes, liberal political causes. I can see people donating to veterans relief. I can see people donating to um, tsunami relief. I mean, you can see, so let's say I wanted lawyers um, who donated to veteran causes. I can target those together and find those exact right people. Now, obviously, there are more lawyer, there are more big city moms than 14.3 million in the entire country. How so? The data Facebook doesn't have data at this level on every person. They just haven't subsegmented out every big city mom. But you could certainly find them through other ways that we can show you, obviously, on that strategy session. So let's give you some examples of actual campaigns we've run for real clients and types of results. Um, so this is a Silver Grove financial group. They are financial planners who serve the educational market. They serve teachers. Um, so it says, get your free retirement report here. Seven biggest mistakes teachers make with their retirement accounts. And that is a trackable URL that goes to the landing page for that free report. This URL is only advertised on, fa on this post on Facebook. So we know exactly how many people we got from this exact ad. So how did we target teachers? Well, we went in front of 118,000 people in the states of New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania where they have offices who are 30 or older, who graduated from college, who speak English, um, who like retirement planning, who are also a certified teacher, et cetera, et cetera. And there's some more data, but it got cut off. Sorry about that. We got in front of 20,725 teachers. They each saw the ad 3.8 times. 120 of those teachers clicked on that ad. It's a lousy click-through rate of 0.15%, but it didn't matter because they got 120 people to their website for $54.93, which is crazy. You can't. Where else could you get in front of 20,000 people for 50 bucks? I mean, if you went to your local TV station or Yellow Pages or newspaper and said, I want to give you 50 bucks, get me in front of 20,000 people, they'd laugh at you. But Facebook will happily take your money. Now, a lot of times people ask, what should my click-through rate be? Well, the measure for success that we use is anything over 1% of a click-through rate is good. That's our baseline. So this click-through rate was actually atrocious, but because it worked so well, we use it as a case study, how you can have a lousy click-through rate and it can still work. Um, this is an example we did for, weight, for a weight loss clinic. And we put this ad in front of 30,000 people in three suburbs. Um, who were between the ages of 25 and 60. Now you'll see how that financial data works because if you look, they are buying frozen food, carbonated beverages, 
salt and salty sweets and snacks, salty snacks, ice cream. They're a shopping enthusiasts. They buy crackers and bakery goods. And they've also made a comment or talked about obesity, weight loss, weight loss coaching, or dieting. So we got in front of 4,770 of those people, got almost 200 clicks, a 3.5% click-through rate, which is great, and we spent $52 for 200 people. And the ad was, sign up for one of our free weight loss seminars today. So that worked really well, and it had a before and after picture of one of the guys in their program who lost a significant amount of weight. Some advanced strategies, because I didn't cram enough in yet. Um, if you go, you want to, we talked about remarketing or retargeting where after someone clicks, we can then follow them around if they don't do what we want the first time. The company we recommend you use for that is called Perfect Audience. And if you go to dominatewebmedia.com slash perfect audience, you can get your first $70 in cl retargeted clicks for free. Um, so uh, that is dominatewebmedia.com slash perfect audience. And, or you can use AdRoll. But this deal um, that my friend Keith has through Perfect Audience, your first $70 is free. Um, and it's really easy to set up. They have instructions on their site on how to cut and paste the code you need and to retarget people or stalk them all over the internet, as we affectionately refer to it as. Something else that's really cool is you can do something called a custom audience in Facebook. What a custom audience is, is you upload an email list of your existing customers or prospects, and then you can run Facebook ads to those people specifically. One of the ways we use that is I did a webinar where I was interviewed by a gentleman by the name of Bradley Nelson um, for just like I'm here doing this for value quiz. I did one on his platform for his emotion code healer people. And what I did was I took the list of everybody who registered for the webinar but didn't show up. And I ran an ad in front of them saying, here's the replay of the webinar we did. And it was 140 people who show, signed up for the webinar but didn't make it. And you'll see I had a 13.6% click-through rate, which is insane. And it's 13.6% because, again, it was really targeted. These were people who he sent them an email telling them to sign up for the webinar with me. They signed up but couldn't make it. And I advertised to them saying, hey, here's a replay of it. So of course they clicked because they wanted to see the webinar that they missed. And it literally cost me a couple dollars to get those people back to watch the webinar and then become our customers. Uh, another thing that we do is called a cheap light campaign. This is to build up your fan base affordably. Um, in this case, to do a cheap light campaign, you want to maybe not geo-target. If you're local, you want to go national. So this is a golf coach. So we did an ad that said this was to get them to like the page. So it was like our page and learn to shoot lower scores, 100% guaranteed. And this was in front of 9.4 million people who like the PGA Tour or golf. Um, so again, 15,000 people saw it. Lousy click-through rate. But we got 61 fans for $11, uh, which worked really, really well. So for a cheap like campaign, in order to get cheap likes, where they're like really cheap, like 25 cents, 50 cents, you need a national audience, a large audience, and a easy thing for them to do, like like our page if you love golf, which theoretically lots of people are going to click like. So you're not trying to sell them anything other than here's you should like our page. Um, here is another example of that weight loss clinic we did. I want to show you our social proof strategy. The first ad we did said, like Weight Loss Western New York, get two free tickets to our new weight loss seminar. And it was in front of people who were buying cookies, crackers, chocolate candy, non-chocolate candy, or sweets and snacks. And the click-through rate was lousy at 0.34%. But we ran what's called social proof, a social proof ad, and the click-through rate tripled to over 1%. What does social proof mean? We ran an ad to the friends of the fans of our page. So what that means is the ad now shows up and says, Seth Green likes Weight Loss Western New York. So if you were my friend, the ad shows up in your news feed saying, I like this, which is not social proof, because if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. So you are, in this case, three times more likely to click and take action because you saw me hypothetically endorsing it that I liked it. 
So that is advertising to the friends of your fans. And again, it doesn't cost any more to do. And in this case, it made our ad more effective, so it actually cost less money. We had spent $43.52 on the first ad. The social proof ad cost $19 because it was three times more effective. So I see by my computer that it's 2.45 so Eastern time. So I'm going to take a breath and say, if you want a 20-minute free strategy session with us, go to ultimatemarketingmagician.com slash value dash quiz. Um, if you'd like this data enabled inside of your account, just friend me at facebook.com slash ultimate marketing magician and then send me a Facebook message saying let me in and I'll let you in. Um, and I'm going to let Sherry and Jane moderate the Q&A and open it up for questions and answers. You're very welcome. Those are all correct. I you 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 are quoting me exactly. Yes, because think about how many times you start something and you don't get to finish it. The kids interrupt you. The, word, the phone rings. You get an email and you don't get to finish something. And you might forget about it if I didn't stalk you and remind you repeatedly until you did it. Right. It is one of the most revolutionary things to happen for business owners because you can get, I mean, for example, I didn't even get to get into it, but we did a campaign for a local restaurant. It's a pizza place. And they went after customers of Domino's and Pizza Hut because their pizza is better. And we got them 50 customers in 24 hours and it cost $30 in an ad budget. And you should probably have people raise their hands in the GoToWebinar chat box so that they don't all get unmuted at once. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. The short answer. Yes. <laughs> and, I, what I heard from you is the we spoke too is the power of testing. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you, you, as you, as you saw, you don't know until you test.
say it's the biggest mistake uh, when when people are, are diving into this. I, I would say the business, biggest mistake is trying to do it themselves and they have the learning curve. What's another mistake that you see in either the languaging or the approach in their ads? Common yep. Um, I agree with your first mistake 100%, of course, but I'm biased. So my second, mis the second biggest mistake we see would be they're people making target market that they're running the same ad to multiple different groups of people. So, for example, they would run the, if you were advertising to let's use my pizza place as an example. I wouldn't run the same ad to Domino's customers that I ran to Pizza Hut customers that I ran to Little Caesars customers that I ran to. Uh, he's cutting out a little bit. Okay, I'm. We lost a little bit of the audio, so we couldn't hear what you were saying in that last section. Okay, so I I think one of the biggest mistakes is. Um, I'm hello. Your audio connection has been hello. Okay, can you hear me now?